Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing three looks and a review and swatches, all of the good things using the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Lure Palette. Guys, when I tell you I've loved every second of this palette, just wait and see the looks. You'll love it too. I have enjoyed playing with this palette so thoroughly, but if you want to see how I created this look on my eyes today, as well as more in-depth review and swatches, then just go ahead and keep on watching. We are here for look number one with Blend Bunny Lure. I am so excited. I think today I want to play with the blues and maybe do like a halo eye using the blues and the purples. I feel like that might be a vibe. I don't really have a plan. We're just going to dive in. I'm going to attempt to do dark to light today. Normally I do light to dark colors, but I feel like with the Beauty Bay formula, it's easier to do dark to light. So I'm going to just attempt to do dark to light with this formula as well. I'm going to start with this dark indigo shade the deep i'm just going to pat that down in my crease and patting first and then we can go ahead and blend that out with some of the other shades i just primed with my p louise base and a white eyeshadow just to give me a nice bright base next i'm going to hop into explore which is the second deepest blue shade and i'm going to use that to buff out the edges it's looking a little crazy my initial impression is the deepest shade is definitely a little bit patchy. I'm going to try it on this eye as well. Maybe I just missed some primer there. But the two shades blend together very nice. So I'm very curious to see how it's going to look with the lightest shade. To blend out those edges, I'm going to go in with this sky blue catch me. And I'm going to just take that on a fluffy brush and blend out all of the edges. Look how nice that blends. I feel like it still looks a little patchy in the corner, if you can tell, but I feel like everything else blends really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that on the other eye real quick. As you can see, I feel like it's still very patchy. I feel like this side blended out pretty good. This side is definitely a little bit patchier. I don't think it's the lighter or mid-tones in the palette. I feel like it's just that deep shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a cut crease moment and I think we're gonna go in with some purple. So I'm just gonna go in with my P. Louise base in the shade Rumor One. I just plopped a little bit of that on the back of my hand and now we're gonna go for a fairly dramatic cut crease. I think I am going to do a pretty big wing with this look as well just because I feel like the corners aren't blending as much as I would like. I do really like the mid and light tones though. It's just those deep tones so far that are giving me issues. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is what we're working with so far. So to start off, I think I'm gonna go into Seductress, which is the mid-tone matte purple. I'm a little bit hesitant to try the dark purple just given how the blue went, but I am very curious about the mid-tones. I'm just popping that right on the edge of my cut crease to meet the dark blue and just gently blending those two together. Okay, that is beautiful. I love how that blended. Next, I'm going to go into the lightest purple jellyfish, and I'm just going to do that right in the middle of my lid next to the mid-tone purple. Look how beautiful those purples blend together. I am shook. Last but not least for the lid itself, I'm going to go in with Charmed, which is this purple shimmer, and I'm going to pop that right in the inner corner of my lid and blend that to meet the purple mattes. Oh my gosh, look at that pigment with one swipe. That is beautiful. I just alerted Bruce, he thinks I'm in distress. For my lower lash line, I really wanna try the Blue Shimmer Bioluminescent. I don't normally go for a shimmery lower lash, but I feel like that might just be the vibe. So I think I'm gonna do the shimmery blue, and then I'm going to probably go into the mid-tone and dark blues, just right on the outer corner. All right, friends, I'm going to go ahead and pop off camera, finish off the rest of my face, and then we'll meet back for the final look. 
We are back and this is the first look completed. I really like how it turned out. I think the blue and the purple are just so gorgeous together. I feel like you can still see a little bit of the patchiness in the very corners from the deepest blue, but I am determined to keep using it and seeing how I can make it work. I felt like every other shade we tried today was perfect. I love how it blends. I just think it's so fun and so cute. I have to go to the bank today, so I'm just gonna be walking in full glam. I love it. And this lip combo too, it's a vibe. And now uh, let's go ahead and move on to the second look for today's look i think i want to go more into the neutrals and do like a neutral halo eye this shade at the top is very enticing it's kind of like this duochrome almost like a purpley pink to green shift so i think i want to do a halo eye with this in the middle and then using the neutrals in the crease so that is what we are going to do i'm going to start off with this light taupey matte this is called storm ahead and i'm going to just take that all over the crease as our base shade in the last look i started with the deepest shades first today i want to start with the lightest and work towards the deepest and kind of see how i feel about that this shade is so pretty. It's kind of like a grayish, like a beigey gray. I feel like this is the type of everyday shade I like to use if I'm doing a cool tone neutral look. Next, I'm going to tap into that mid-tone cool brown. This is Pirate's Life, and I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the crease as well. And because I'm doing a halo eye, I'm going to pop it in the crease and then on the outer and inner corners of my eye. Sorry about all the snowplow sounds. That is super pigmented. Like I was saying, sorry about all the snowplow sounds. We got 10 inches of snow last night, if not more. And, um maintenance is snow plowing it outside my window right now i will say i feel like these blend together super super nice like they blend together so seamlessly i'm really concentrating the pigment in the outer and inner corners of my eye and then taking the leftover up into the crease and i feel like that gives the nicest blend and you're not getting too much pigment in the crease I am having a little bit of trouble blending in this outer corner. I had that problem the other day when I was doing my blue and purple look. So I think I just have a dry patch there. I do have really dry skin naturally. So occasionally I'll get dry patches that show up underneath my eyeshadow and I can't blend them as good as I could normally. So I'm just going to assume that I just have some dry patches right now and it is not the shadows because I'm noticing it in the same spot. Next, I'm going to take a touch of Black C, which is the black matte, and I'm just going to pop that right on the inner and outer corners of my eye, not really taking it up too high into the crease, just to add a little bit more definition. This is a beautiful black. I feel like sometimes blacks are hit or miss and they can be a little bit more on the gray side rather than black, but I feel like this is a true black. I think I'm also going to tap into the green shimmer because my shirt is green and I feel like it would be just like a fun little pop. So I'm going to go into folklore and I'll do that on the lid and then I'll hop into pearl, which is that duochrome shade and just pop that right in the middle. For the lower lash line, I think I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to hop into that taupey shade and that mid-tone brown and just smudge those on the lower lash line. Okay, friends, I'm going to go ahead and finish the look off camera. I'm just going to throw on a little bit of liner, mascara, and lips, and then we'll meet back for the final look. This is the second look complete, a little bit more grungy, a little bit more messy. I feel like it's the vibe. I opted for just mascara and not lashes today because I do have to go to work and I really just don't feel like wearing lashes today. But overall, I think the look is super cute. It's definitely a little bit different. I feel like this palette is very colorful and this neutral row just really spoke to me and I wanted to try something a little bit less colorful for the second look. With that, let's go ahead and move on to the third and final look in today's video. Okay, friends, it's time for our third and final look using the Blend Bunny Lure Palette. Today, I think I want to play with the aquas and the greens. I really want to play with the aquas because I feel like you'll match my shirt. Actually, I wore the shirt knowing I wanted to play with the aquas, but beside the point. I think that's the vibe. After that, I feel like we will have tried almost every shade in here, maybe with the exception of the pinks, but I could probably figure out a way to work some pinks into this look. So let's go ahead and start. To start with this look, I'm going to go ahead and go into Lost at Sea, which is this lightest 
aqua shade and I'm going to do that in the crease on the first half of my eye. I think I'm going to do an aqua to green look. So I am just taking that on a fluffy brush and going and messily buffing that up in the inner half of my eye. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going for more of a smoked out vibe today anyway. Next, I'm gonna jump into the Midtone Aqua Sea Nymph and I'm going to place that in the crease just under that lighter shade and blend those two together. This color gives me life. It is so good. Look how pretty that blends. That just blends flawlessly. This couldn't be going any better. Using that same fluffy brush we used for the lightest shade, I'm going to go ahead and hop into Sea Foam, which is the lightest green. This is that pastel, almost like minty green. And I'm going to pop that all over the crease on the outer half of the lid, blending it to meet the blues. And using the same brush I used for the mid-tone aqua, I'm going to go into the mid-tone green, which is Mermaid Lagoon. And same thing, I'm just going to pop that right in the crease and blend it in with the brightest green. I am very excited about this green. Ooh, that's beautiful. I love aquas and greens. I just feel like they look so beautiful. And all four of these shades, I feel like, are just blending together so nicely. For my lid today, I'm going to hop into In a Bottle, which is the Aqua Shimmer. I did use the green shimmer in yesterday's look. So I'm going to start with In a Bottle, see how I like it all over the lid. If I feel like I need a little bit more green, then I will hop into the green shimmer as well. But I'm going to just start with the Aqua one for now. I think I am going to hop into Folklore, which is that green shimmer, and I'm just going to pop it right on the outer corner. I am going to do a winged eyeliner, and I think I'm going to do a twist and do some white winged eyeliner. So I'm going to just take the smallest bit of that green shimmer and just pop it right on the corner. I want to keep this look pretty bright, monochromatic, and open. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into the two lightest aqua shades, Lost at Sea and Sea Nymph, and I'm going to start buffing that on my lower lash line, but I think I'm only going to take it about halfway through. I want to keep that eye really bright and open, and I think I might even take Baited, which is that pastel bubblegum pink, and do that right in the inner corner and the inner half of my lower lash line. Look how cute this is. A little bit of a monochromatic aqua with a pop of purple. I'm going to go ahead and finish off the look. For liner, I'm going to do a white wing. This is from the ColourPop and Nightmare Before Christmas collection, and it is in the shade Pumpkin King. And then for my lower waterline, I'm going to take my Rem Beauty So Mod eye pencil, and I'm just going to pop that right in the middle of my lower waterline just to brighten up right in the middle of the eye. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the look off camera, and then I'll meet you guys back for my final thoughts and swatches of the palette. All right, friends, this is the third and final look in today's video. How do you guys like it? I think this is beautiful. It's just so fun and playful, and I'm so excited to wear this out when I go grocery shopping later today. Overall, I think this is just the cutest look ever, 10 out of 10. Before we jump into my final thoughts on the palette, I am going to go ahead and share some swatches of each of the shades for you. I did break them up into groups of eight because there are too many shades to fit all on my arm at once. So you will see each shade individually and a description of each one as well. So up first we have the neutral and green rose. So the first shade we have here is pearl. It's almost this duochrome of a pink to gold shift. It's very pretty. Then we have Storm Ahead, which is this matte taupe. It almost pulls a little bit more lavender or gray toned on my skin tone just because I am so fair. We have Pirate's Life, which is a true chocolatey matte brown and Black Sea, which is a true black matte. For the green row, we have Folklore, which is this almost minty green shimmer shade. We have Sea Foam, which is a pastel mint matte. Mermaid Lagoon, which is a true green matte. And Uncharted, which is this deep forest green matte. The next row of shades we have are the purpley row and the aqua row. And honestly, these are probably my two favorite rows in the entire palette. So up first we have Charmed, which is almost like a Barney purple shimmer. It's very beautiful. We have Jellyfish, which is a orchid lavender matte. It is super pretty, one of my favorite shades. The next shade is Seductress, which is more of an orchid matte. 
And last for the purples, we have Tentacles, which is a plum matte purple. For the aqua row, we have In a Bottle, which is a really pretty true aqua shimmer shade. Lost at Sea is almost a robin egg blue matte. Sea Foam, which is a true aqua matte shade. And 332 meters, which is a deep aqua teal matte. For the last row of shimmers, we have Sailor's Delight, which is a shimmery rose gold shade. We have Baited, which is a matte bubblegum pink. Booty, which is a matte hot pink or magenta and x marks the spot which is a deeper burgundy matte for the blue row we have bioluminescent which is this really beautiful shifty blue shimmer catch me which is a matte sky blue explore which is a matte cobalt blue and the deep which is a matte indigo shade now that we've gone through the swatches, I would say the standout shades to me are definitely the purple and aqua rose. I feel like they're honestly my favorite out of the entire palette. I did feel like maybe these two deeper blues right here, Explore and The Deep, were a bit patchy as well as some of the other deepest shades. The mid-tones and pastels and shimmers all performed great, but I did feel like some of those deeper shades did feel a little bit patchy. I did mention in a couple of my looks that I did have some patchiness on the corners of my eyes. I honestly think after using this palette several times over, swatching it, playing with it, and conversing with other people that have gotten the palette, I do feel a lot of the patchiness I was experiencing was from my dry skin. I do have naturally very, very dry skin, and sometimes I get dry patches, especially around my eyes eyes, places where I tend to be a little bit more gentle when washing and moisturizing. So sometimes my eyes do get a little bit dry and I do feel a lot of the patchiness was from that and not necessarily from the shades themselves. In the swatches, you did see that the last two rows the pink and the blue rose were a little bit patchy as well, but that is honestly because I am using a reusable makeup wipe and my skin is very dry because I've been swatching and wiping and talking about each of the shades. So I honestly think it was just my bad swatching because I have a pretty damp arm now. My arm is very irritated from all of the swatches. Sensitive dry skin, swatching, especially larger palettes and pigmented palettes can definitely be a bit of a struggle. Overall, I did really like the palette. Like I said, the standouts to me were the purple and aqua rose. If I had to pick specific shades, I would say jellyfish in a bottle, charmed, and even pearl up in the corner were some of my favorites. I would even say that storm ahead, this matte taupey shade is also a favorite of mine. I do really like cool tone neutrals and this shade reminds me a lot of twig from the ABH sultry palette. So I did really like that because that is one of my favorite neutral shades. In terms of uniqueness of the shades, you do have 24 shades in the palette and I feel out of all of them you don't really have a lot of duplicates i do feel like the aqua and the green shimmers in a bottle and folklore pull very similar i also feel jellyfish and baited pull very similar as well as lost at sea and catch me the two lightest blue shades are very similar but other than those three pairings i do feel like most of the shades are very unique i feel like the similarities within some of the shades are different enough that i feel like it can be justified as having them all in the palette Overall, I don't feel like there was much I would change about the palette. I do wish there was maybe a lighter inner corner highlighting shade, but as you guys see today, I did the lightest pink and then I just popped my highlighter on top of it. So I didn't really feel like it was too much of an issue, but if I were to use only this palette for my eye look and I wasn't dipping into highlighters or other shades, I would have liked to see it maybe a matte white or maybe a light shimmer shade just for that inner corner, but it is personal preference. I do feel like you could use any of the shimmers or pastel shades as inner corner shades and you wouldn't really run into any issues. And in terms of packaging, I do feel like this packaging is both very practical and it represents the palette very well. You have lure in cursive and then of course all of the mermaid scales and this does have like a glittery texture to it which is really really cool. And size wise, I feel like it's a pretty good size. For reference, here is my Beauty Bay Retro Love palette. They are very similar. The Lure one is just a little bit wider, whereas the Beauty Bay is a bit taller. But as a whole, I feel like the sizing of the packaging is very easy to store. It can go great with a lot of other palettes as well. And I do like that the side has the Blend Bunny and then Lure on the side because I do store a lot of my palettes in a drawer 
together like this. So it's nice to be able to see the top and be able to reach in and pick things out. But those are just little nitpicky details that I like. They might not matter to you, but as a whole, I did very much enjoy the palette. This was my first Blend Bunny palette, but I definitely would consider picking up any interesting releases that I might find in the future. The quality was super good. The longevity was there. I felt like I could wear it all day without any creasing or smudging, and I really appreciated that. Overall, it was a great palette. Nine out of 10 stars for me, the minus one star, just because I wish there was an inner corner highlight shade. But like I said, I did improvise and use that pastel purple today. That is all for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the three looks. Let me know which was your favorite. If you picked up this palette, what you think of Blend Bunny, I would love to know all your thoughts down below. And with that, I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye, friends.